can change the world. One life Building villages around the world from SOS Children's Villages, uh, Lynn Kronberger. Lynn, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. So at uh, SOS Children's Villages, uh, tell us about that as a global organization mm -hmm. and then let's focus on the U.S. So SOS Children's Villages uh, provides loving homes um, and services to the orphan and abandoned children around the world. Mm -hmm. We're in 133 countries. We have over wow. 500 villages and we provide holistic care for the child. So in countries where there isn't good education, we also build schools. Uh, we provide uh, health clinics where there aren't medical facilities, uh, but most importantly we provide a home, an actual structure, and a mother, which is what makes our model very different. Uh, so we're long-term care for orphaned and abandoned children. Wow. Yeah. When I was a child growing up, there there seemed to be a lot of orphanages, mm -hmm. and then they seemed to go away as right. the foster care right. circumstances here in the United States grew. Right. Um, but there are still a lot of orphaned children right. around the world, aren't there? Absolutely. And. Um, we don't think of ourselves necessarily as an orphanage because we do provide that mother. Uh, if siblings are orphaned or abandoned together, we don't split them up. So siblings come to the home together. Mm -hmm. uh, we build families. We don't want to rip them apart further. So whatever family is left intact, we keep them together. Uh, and then depending on the country and what the culture is like, six to ten children per house. So it's much more of a home setting than, a, than an orphanage. Mm -hmm. uh, but given that, there are over 150 million children uh, abandoned and orphaned in this world today, so there's there's a lot of work to do. And um, yeah, I mean, I feel so sad when I hear that that there are, there are 150 million mm -hmm. abandoned children right. because I think of that as that there's 150 million brains that could be doing wonderful right. things. In absolutely, the world. absolutely. Um, how, especially a child who uh, is in a very poor country. Sure. How do you work with with that community? to help the children. So um, that's a great point because one of the things we're trying to do, the original SOS model, we were founded to provide structures for children during the war. That's how we were founded. World um, War II? Yes, World War II um, in Austria and Germany. Um, but from that, uh, after we've built all of the villages, we're starting to provide more services in the community um, to assist the children, maybe to reunite them with their family if that's um, uh, you know, an option. But the other thing is what can we do to prevent abandonment to begin with? How can we support the community? So are parents having to give up their children because of war or because of disease or poverty? Uh, so we look at whatever issue is in one of the countries that we're serving and then we provide services to try and help the families deal with those issues so they're not forced to give up their children. So that's a really important part of kind of the newer model as well is we want to be there for the children who are abandoned but what can we do to try and prevent that ahead of time. And then the, the, the medical facilities and the schools that we provide to the SOS children we also make available to the local community. So in the schools that we build it's not just the children in our homes it's children from the community and we try and become part of the community not not a separate part of the community because if we can also heal the community we're also helping to, to heal that child and that way we're impacting not just the child but the community around them which makes it more successful for for the child and and, and a great benefit to the communities that we're serving too. How do you decide where you're going to go? Uh, that's a tough one because there's so much need. Um, so it, it's about need and it's hard to argue where there isn't need but uh, we have villages also in this country too so there's need here in the United States as there is obviously globally uh, and then it's a real partnership with the local governments and with the community um, because in terms of raising children within the different communities we've, we, we need to register those children we need to make sure that they are identified that they have a voice um, and so we work with the local governments uh, to provide that that care to these children uh, so it's a lot of working with the governments, it's working with the community, and then we need the volunteers and the, the mothers who are willing to um, do this type of service and, and stick with it for a long period of time because we're not a short-term solution. Are you finding uh, cultural difficulties when you go into some countries? Sure. Um, uh, one of the things that we do is make sure that the people we hire are within those communities. So the, the mothers that we hire are, for, are from those communities. Um, the people that run the villages are from those communities. And then we try and work within those um, you know, different cultural challenges so that we're really understanding uh, what's going on and not coming in you know, with our own ideas and, yeah. um, and, and making sure that we're really helping and not kind of putting our own um, 
thoughts on, on how things should be repaired. Uh, so we do, but we work very hard to overcome those and try and uh, make sure that we're, we're still doing the best thing we can for, for the children. Unfortunately, there are many armed conflicts around the world. Yes. Mm. From armed yeah. conflicts come orphans. Mm -hmm. Is that where you go? Do you, do you we go? Do. We are, we are in Syria right now, and um, wow. uh, some of our villages have had to move. A lot of our, our children and our moms are now refugees, so we're now providing services to the refugees as well as trying to make sure that the children in, are still protected who are still in Syria. So uh, in the Sudan, uh, we're in Egypt, uh, that's, that's where we are, that's what we do. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's dangerous work. Isn't it is it? dangerous work. How do you work the, with the local governments there or... I mean, in, in the cases of some of those countries, there aren't local governments, are there? Well, the, the agreement with the government is that we're there to protect the children. So we stay apolitical. Um, we don't make comments about what's going on because our sole purpose is to protect the child. And we let the governments do what they need to do to try and figure out how they're going to best lead the country. Um, but our purpose is there for the child. So everything that we do and say is all about child's rights, about making sure that the children are protected. And that's kind of the agreement. We're there to protect the children. That's all we're there to do. Um, and I, I think that's the way that we're able to, to stay there as much as possible. But the, the concept of a child soldier is not just something of the past. No, it's not something not. that we read in Time magazine. Right. It, is in, it is indeed happening today. It How is. do you keep that from happening? Well, uh, some of that goes to the prevention issues. If we're able to uh, make sure that that child is already in an SOS home and already has a future and knows that um, he's loved, he's being cared for, he's got an education, he has good health care, he's less likely to be attracted into that other world. Um, so prevention is a big part of that for us. Um, and we do what we can to make sure that that is not an enticing prospect. Um, I understand that the name SOS Children's Villages is as well known in other countries as the Red Crosses. Yes. Is that right? It is, it is. Uh, which uh, is one of our challenges here in the United States. Uh, we've been around for over 60 years. Uh, internationally, we have a great brand. Uh, in the U.S., we don't have as strong a brand. And that's uh, the thing that we're trying to change now is to let Americans know that we are a, an organization that has a great reputation, especially when it comes to, to children's rights and taking care of the orphan and abandoned children. Uh, but we didn't start here. And so we've got to catch up in terms of letting people know. We work a lot uh, with the UN. And so there are certain sectors in this country that know us very well and know of our reputation. Um, so now we're trying to, to get the word out and let uh, Americans know that uh, we do great work. We also have villages here in this country. So mm -hmm. we have villages in Illinois and Florida that do great work and um, work very well with the governments there and have a great reputation there. So we just need to spread the word a little bit more. How did you determine Illinois and Florida versus any other state? Yeah, good question. <laughs> um, both in Flor Florida and Illinois, we had a philanthropist from Europe who knew about SOS, who were living in Florida and Illinois at the time, and, and knew what the model did back home and thought in their new community that this is what you know Illinois needs or this is what Florida needs. It needs an SOS village. Uh, and so both uh, diff two different philanthropists started those initiatives, both in Illinois and Florida. It sounds like you're taking on a, a monumental task. Yeah. I mean, protecting children who don't have people there to protect them. Um, how can you ever get enough people to do this? Um, it is a challenge. Uh, money <laughs> is one of the things that it takes. Uh, but when we work with the communities, we find that the communities that we work in are very invested in trying to give a better life for the children. Mm -hmm. And so finding mothers, finding uh, workers for the villages, is it's a challenge, uh, but it's not impossible. Uh, because I think it gives the whole community hope uh, and this is a chance to try and turn things around, make things better for the children that maybe they didn't have, uh, or and a way to protect their community is by protecting their children. So uh, it's a successful model, it does work, and it's just finding those people within the community that really want to uh, look towards the future. And by protecting the children, that's a good way to do it. There are stories over the past five, six years out of Brazil mm -hmm. uh, where children are leading some very, very difficult lives, and mm -hmm. as a result of that, they do what probably anybody would do who is out there on their own and they exactly. become essentially very very wild yes and um, very dangerous to society in addition to themselves 
Is there anything that SOS Children's Villages can do for them? Uh, it, it, again, it's about the prevention piece of it. So in, the same things to prevent abandonment are the same things from preventing a child to go off track. If they have that security, if they feel loved, if they know that there's a future, a lot of those children are branching out and, and, and doing wild and dangerous things because they don't really feel like they have a future. Uh, but if children know that, there's, that they have a bright prospect, um, they're more likely to stay on track in terms of an education and trying to find a way to become a successful adult. So that's what we try and do is, is really work on um, making them feel loved so they don't have to go out and, and try those behaviors that, that put them and others in a dangerous situation. This is a question that I often ask of guests and, I, and I'm not certain that I should ask it of you because of the, the difficulties mm -hmm. of your work. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it that keeps you up at night? <laughs> what doesn't keep me up at night? Well, it's like taking that. care of orphaned and abandoned children. I, you know, what, what helps me sleep at night would be the success stories. And we have a lot of really wonderful success stories. Okay, help us out. Help our okay. audience sure. out right now. Let's, let's hear some success stories. So uh, when I first came to SOS, um, I met a wonderful alum named Gebre, uh, who was from Ethiopia. He was um, uh, delivered to SOS Ethiopia when he was three months old. Uh, both his parents were dead, and uh, he had several siblings, and his grandfather couldn't take care of all the siblings. So the younger siblings came to the SOS home. Uh, he grew up through the SOS villages. Mm -hmm. He attended um, our college in Ghana and got a scholarship to Harvard. And has graduated Harvard and now works in Boston uh, wow. on energy. Mm -hmm. uh, Congratulations. So, exactly. And there's a there's a brain that at three months old uh, uh, yeah. could have been abandoned yeah. but instead yeah. He's doing great things. In He's the world. doing great things, and there are over hundreds of stories like that in the United States of children that have come over here and really made a life for themselves that grew up in SOS villages. So, what helps me sleep is knowing that the work we're doing is actually working, and that I get to meet people like Gebre uh, on a pretty regular basis and hear how important the work we are doing was for them. And they honestly say to me, "If you weren't there, I wouldn't be here." And so, knowing that makes it a little bit easier to sleep. So I want to switch uh, then back to the United States. Sure. Um, the United States has a, a very uh, deeply ingrained, and I'm going to say it in a positive way, mm -hmm. uh, foster care system. Mm -hmm. um, but you offer something different. We do. Um, we um, provide a different model. Um, we uh, hire the mothers directly and work with the mothers and train them to become uh, good mothers, uh, but mothers who have to deal with issues that not every mother wants to deal with. So a lot of the children that come to us have been through some real traumas. Um, and so for mothers who have to deal with children who have been emotionally damaged, there's, there's some extra work and there's some extra training. So we make sure that the mothers have that training on the front end. Um, we provide the structure for the foster mother and, and support for that mother. So when she needs a night off, we have somebody to take it, step in and take that role. So it's it's kind of a, a foster care system with extra support within the SOS model. Mm -hmm. So in the United States, our programs are looked at as an extension of, of foster care uh, mm -hmm. services. Um, and, it, and it's working really well. Our graduation rate in Illinois is over 95% of the children in our villages, oh, really? which is absolutely incredible. That is. And it's, again, it goes to show uh, the power of that individualized attention, that one person throughout their lives that is, is able to stay consistent, which a lot of children in the foster care system don't necessarily have. Mm. Okay, five years from now, mm. where you're sitting in that chair mm -hmm. and uh, you've, you've gotten some sleep, <laughs> <laughs> and I were to ask you this question, so, well, so it's been five years since mm -hmm. we last talked, how'd you do? We did great. We did great. Uh, we are launching some branding campaigns. We have a, a campaign right now called It Takes, uh, asking people to question what does it take to raise a child and then take a pledge to help us further our mission here in the United States. So that's going to go great. Uh, more Americans will know who we are and want to help in the work that we're doing both internationally and uh, within the United States. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll have start to build you know, maybe a couple other villages within the states by then too. Lynn, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Good to be here. Rainmaker believes we can change the world.